Here is a purple ink by Montegrappa Harry Potter Night Bus. Let's jump straight to the end with my opinion on this ink. The paper I'm using here is a Moramon Nemesine notebook. There is a certain liveliness to this ink and I can really see being a favorite of the Harry Potter line from Montegrappa. It's a beautiful purple with a slight lean towards blue, and it has only the slightest tone variation by pen, not enough to make any kind of a real issue out of it. It shades gradually and frequently enough to know it is a shading ink. The blue lean can play a slight trick on the eyes depending on the light, and every once in a while the blue comes through in a magical and impressive kind of way, being a blue surrounded by purple opposed to a purple with a light blue lean to it. Not really, it's, it's much more really a purple with just the slightest blue lean. I just wanted to throw that magical impression line in there. I had impressed myself with it and I know it's garbage. The pen for today is a Lamy Safari. All of the writing samples are done with a Retro 51 P51 with an extra fine nib, a Retro 51 Corsair with a medium nib, a Retro 51 Lincoln with a 1.1 stub. Now that we know my opinion on this ink, let's take a look at the first writing sample done on Claire Fontaine. <laughs> Looking at the extra fine nib, we get a very nice looking purple here with no feathering, with no spread, with some very nice shading. Look at hurry, how it starts just a bit darker, lightens up through the word, think directly underneath it is quite a bit darker. Of directly to the right of that starts lighter and works its way darker. Look at he down underneath a little bit lighter still and being a very cool looking purple. Looking at the medium nib, it is darker than it was with the extra fine, not tons darker, much more of the darker tones that we saw in the shading from that. No feathering, no spread, it does shade, not a ton, but while it is in general on a, a little bit darker spectrum, we do get even darker areas. Take a look at the word talking on the second line compared to golem right next to it. Even talking starts a little bit lighter and works its way darker, where useful on the third line goes from a mid-tone to much darker on the EF and lightens up into the rest of the word. Looking at the stub nib, it is right about the same tone as it was with the medium. No feather, no spread. It does shade. It shades, I think, a little bit better than it did with the medium because it shows more of the mid-tones than the medium did. So mean on the second line starts light, gets much darker at the E, and lightens up again. And look at he directly above it mid-tone to a dark purple and doing a very impressive job of it. Looking at the back of the page, we get no bleeding and no ghosting. Like most inks, this one comes in a bottle. This is how the Pilot Custom 823 fits. And here is the Pelican M1000. Here is the ink level when you can no longer fill a Lamy Safari. There is approximately three milliliters of ink left. The next writing sample is done in a Portage Reporter's Notebook. Looking at the extra fine nib, it is darker than it was on the Clairefontaine. There is no feathering. There is no spread. There is some shading coming through, especially from one word to the other. Take a look at wicked and creature, two different toned words that have happened. Yet on the second line, had starts darker and gets lighter and maintaining a very nice purple with a ever so slight blue lean to it. Looking at the medium nib, it is just a tad bit darker than it was with the extra fine same tone as the Claire Fontaine with no feathering, with no spread, with some decent shading coming through. I don't know if you heard that truck just going by and because it was loud to me. 
we'll find out in post. It'll still be there because the house I'm in now is quite a bit louder than the old, hey, there's the clock going. It said one o'clock. I think I've rambled needlessly here. Looking at the stub nib, it is the same tone as it was with the medium, the same tone as the Claire Fontaine. There is no feathering. There is no spread. There is some wonderful shading. Look at the word wonderful on the third line. Starts with a nice mid-tone, gets darker on the D, lightens up into the rest of the word until you get to L, which gets much darker. Looking at the back of the page, the ghosting is well under control. You could write back here and be able to read it without a problem. Nothing bled through touching the page underneath. There's a lot to learn by doing multiple chromatographies. The one on the left is immediately put into water for 10 to 15 seconds. The one on the right, marked with a D, is let dry for 10 minutes before putting it into water. The next writing sample is done on a national brand Steno notebook. Looking at the extra fine nib, it is a tad bit darker as a tone than it was on the Claire Fontaine. Very obviously a result of the tone of the paper. We get no feathering. We get no spread. We get a, a little tiny bit of shading, really not enough to mention. Most of the shading has really gone away. But if you take a look at the word whispered. On the third line, it starts lighter, gets darker, gets lighter, gets darker, gets lighter, gets darker, does it back and forth, just about one letter at a time as if it was on purpose. Himself on the third line goes from darker to lighter. Very nice. Looking at the medium nib, it is just a little bit darker than it was with the extra fine tiny bit lighter than it was on the Claire Fontaine. We do get feathering. You see it on days. You see it on wanted, both on the left side, but still on the first line, we see it in that's, and we see it on wants in the second line, and because in the third line, and if in the fourth line, when the writing actually gets to it, it's got quite a bit of feathering. Yeah, it does spread just a little bit, which is not a common thing on this paper, but it's doing it. It still has some shading coming through. You see it at the end of quite a few words where it darkens up on the last letter of many words, like on the first line, the T of what or the TS of wants. It's there. Uh, this would not be a best paper for it. Looking at the stub nib, it is the same tone as it was with the medium. It does feather. Look at that on the first line. Look at finger on the second line. Look at full on the third line when it gets to it. Could on the fourth line when it gets to it. There's a tiny bit of spread. Neither the feather nor the spread are a kind of issue that would stop you from using this ink, but they are present. And it is not shading, though the color we're getting here is rather pleasing. Looking at the back of the page, you see the ink gets very deep into the paper, really explaining why it feathers so much. This paper and this ink did not get along. Nothing bled through touching the page underneath, but there's a lot of ghosting. I don't think you could easily write back here and be able to read both sides of your notes. Resistance tests are done to see how this ink can be expected to perform on the page. And more importantly, how hard it may be to clean from your pen. The smear is allowed to dry for three days before testing it. The highlighter is on the top left, pen flush is on the top right, one third bleach solution is on the bottom left, and water is on the bottom right. The next writing sample is done in a Rhodia notebook. Looking at the extra fine nib, it is the same tone as it was on the Claire Fontaine. There is no feather, there is no spread, there is no shading. But the vertical lines disappear. This is a bold enough and dark enough ink that the vertical lines really get lost and they don't draw anything away from it. Unfortunately, it's not shading here, which I do think was a very nice thing that it was doing. Yeah. 
looking at the medium nib. It is darker than it was with the extra fine, lighter than it was on the Claire Fontaine. There is no feathering. There is no spread. There is shading much better shading than it was on the Claire Fontaine. Look at precious starts light or sorry, starts dark, works its way a little bit lighter, gets darker at the U S at the end head goes dark to light to dark, but directly underneath it dark where who right next to that lightens up a bit. I do really like how this is looking on the medium for this paper. Looking at the stub nib, it is a tiny bit darker than it was with the medium same tone as the Claire Fontaine. No feathering, no spread. Yes, it shades. It shades just as well as it did on the Claire Fontaine, which is nowhere near as well as it did with the medium just a second ago that you saw, or I don't know, at the way I'm rambling, it might be just an hour ago, but it shades not as well. If you look at days on the first line, it goes from a mid-tone. It darkens up at the YS at the end. When goes from a, a lighter tone to a dark tone at the he and lightens up on the N again. I think the shading we're getting here is very nice on this paper. Looking at the back of the page, there's no bleeding and no ghosting. With over a thousand inks reviewed, let's take a look at some color comparables. Here is Diamine Violet. Here is Noodler's Cactus Fruit Eel. Here is Private Reserve Infinity Purple. Here is Thornton's Violet. The next writing sample is done in a composition lab notebook. <laughs> Looking at the extra fine nib, it is the same tone as the Claire Fontaine, though a little bit flatter as a tone on the page. No feathering, no spread, only the slightest, slightest seasoning of some shading in there. You spot some letters of it every now and then, or you see the dot of an eye kind of thing. Not really shading in any kind of a standout way, though I think you gain nerd points for using this in school, and I always give nerd points to students because I'm a nerd. Looking at the medium nib, it is darker than it was with the extra fine. It is lighter than it was on the Claire Fontaine. There is no feather. There is no spread. There is shading-ish. It's there, and it really does grab your attention at the moments it's there, like the word hid, the very first word, or it on the third line, the on the first line, the end of back on the second line, the T of, tilt of still on the second. It's there, and it does grab your attention, but it's not doing it in a consistent way that would really make me much happier as a shading ink. Looking at the stub nib, it is the same tone as the medium, just a little bit lighter than it was on the Claire Fontaine, flatter in tone than on the Claire Fontaine. Still a very pleasing purple to look at with no feathering, with no spread, with shading about as well as it did on the Claire Fontaine. Take a look at B on the first line, dark to light, parted, dark to light, to dark to light, to dark, it, light to dark, two tones, two letters, you can't ask for more than that. When on the second line is a nice light tone, drawing your attention to he, where the H is a little bit darker than when was, and the E is very dark. Looking at the back of the page, we have no problem with ghosting back here. We could easily write back here. Great for the student note taker. Nothing bled through touching the page underneath, so you don't have any phantom letters showing up unexpectedly. While it's nice to see color comparables, I prefer to see an ink that complements the color on the page. Here is a green ink by Sailor Studio 867. 
Here is a gray ink by Robert Oster Graphite. Here is a pink ink by Califolio Rose Granat. Here is a yellow ink by KWZ El Dorado. The last writing sample is done on 20 pound copy paper. Looking at the extra fine nib, it is darker than it was on the Claire Fontaine. A bit more purpley, weird way to describe it, since it is purple, then it, a bit more purpley than on the Claire Fontaine. Still darker. Yes, it feathers. Looking at looking, lots of feathering. Stray goblins, stray feathers, feathery goblins, even. I don't know that they existed, but they might have been another species there. This spreads to a little bit more than a medium. This does have moments of shading, but this is copy paper and shading makes me worried about bleed through. Looking at the medium nib, it is a little bit darker than it was with the extra fine, a little lighter than it was on the Claire Fontaine. Feathers, spreads, feels like I'm wasting the ink by writing on this paper, but it's the one everybody always asks for. And I look at it and I say, why? It's just gross. But I think you could use it if you really wanted to. People will judge you for using good ink on bad paper. There's no shading though, so maybe it doesn't bleed. Looking at the stub nib, it is a little bit darker than it was with the medium, quite a bit darker than it was on the Claire Fontaine. It feathers like a new beast that has been created in all of Mordor. I that was the one that I could come up with, and like a new beast in all of the Hobbit. I don't. I've been writing this book and just rewriting, copying that. I'm not writing the book. I'm not taking credit. I'm copying it as writing samples. It spreads. It's gross. Uh, copy paper is the golem of all papers. Ew. It's just, it's just, ew, this slimy creature thing that is 20 pound copy paper. Looking at the page underneath, you see it did bleed through in the stub and in the extra fine, but not in the medium. Now, this is just dotting the page underneath, and it's really be me being nitpicky about it. I guess you could use it, except for the fact at the back of the page, it looks absolutely disgusting in the amount of show through. Why do we keep wanting to use copy paper? I don't know. But we ask for it, and we see the disgusting results. So what nib and pen do I recommend using for this ink? The paper I'm using here is yellow Rhodia paper. While I really enjoy the rich dark tone with the shading from a wet medium, it was the medium flow fine that always caught my attention on the page. Though it looks equally nice in the stub. Crap. Let's make this a dealer's choice, uh, depending on the fine nuances that you really would prefer. For the most part, we get a very consistent performing color and a very consistent all the way through. Some might call it boring and predictable, like I would, though there are tiny nuances to make choices for. I hope you got something out of this video, and if you're not subscribed, I would invite you to do so now.